Just past high tide at just past 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, last day of July. 82 degrees, 9 o'clock in the morning. It is sticky outside, T-Rex. The feel of Florida in New England again today. Well, Rex is not going to be that well behaved. Steve, would you like to join us? Come on. Do that jump like you did yesterday. Come on, Steve. All right, don't come. Sun and clouds, cirrus clouds, those are ice crystals way up in the sky. And then those are cumulus clouds. Those are water vapor, floating water vapor. And so that, that cirrus clouds are a result of uh, a warm front that's really hundreds, if not a thousand miles away. The real hot weather is right in the middle of the nation. Now, we have regular hot weather in New England and humidity causing the low clouds. And chances for showers and thunderstorms today and pretty much every day until further notice. There's some convection already happening this morning. Uh, they're really hit or miss. We have the Trillium event, a fundraiser for the Blue Hill Observatory in Canton. Still not too late to register. And, and they're asking, is it going to rain? I said, well, last year we had the threat of a shower or a thunderstorm and the sun came out when it was the uh, sort of grand celebration for the Mish Michaels Hall for Scientific Discovery, if you think Mish played a role in that. And today, same deal, uh, hit or miss shower or a thunderstorm. There were some severe storms in Vermont last evening, but most of the action is a result of the ring of fire type heat with the thunderstorms that move from the north central plains. They form in South Dakota and then go across Iowa. There's one crossing through southern Illinois into Kentucky and Tennessee this morning. Sort of the same track as one that happened yesterday. Same track as one's going to happen again today. These are those mesoscale convective systems we talk about on the edge of the serious heat. Are you going to come out or are you not going to come out? Something's up with Steve. Oh, he's all wrapped around. He got off the chair, wrapped around, wrapped around twice. He knows when he's at the end of his line. Thank you for joining us. Consider that intermission number one. I guess we should talk more about what happened in Vermont. We knew going in that this was going to be a tremendous hurricane season because of the energy in the Atlantic Ocean. Not all energy comes with named storms. The last two storms, well, the remnant of barrel, that did come from the tropics. And this system, the last 48 hours, actually it was only six hours, Monday night to Tuesday morning, that dropped another eight inches of rain. This also had to do with a front that went through New England and then low pressure formed pretty close to Bermuda, tropical air or subtropical air, water temperatures in the 80s. And that low pressure system went into the Gulf of Maine where it phased with an upper level low, which is anomalous cool air. So anomalous warm, humid air met up with anomalous cool air. And because it was right in the center of the upper level low, the rain had nowhere to go. It just formed and sat there over the Northeast Kingdom, resulting in all these images we're seeing. Connor, thank you, uh, on the corner of Hunger Mountain Road. I think that's the name of that road. And 114, the bridge was undermined. And Henry Swenson, champion giant pumpkin grower, drone operator over St. Johnsbury. Well, that's right on the border between St. Johnsbury and Lindenville on uh, Severance Hill Road at the base of that area. Barry Tire, that's the business there that was just inundated with a lot of damage and crews out there already working to clean it up yesterday. Thank you, Connor and everybody for sharing the data and of course we've talked about it Jim Cantori is talking about Miss Lindenville diner not reopening sad situation T-Rex is wrapped around a rose bush and I can't get him out it's almost impossible to get caught up never mind get ahead so let's smell the roses gorgeous is it going to rain at our house today almost impossible to say there's a weak cold front. It's pretty much separate from all that heat in the middle of the nation. Let's call it kind of a split flow out of southern Canada. 
and that's where we're getting our scattered shower and a thunderstorm from today. You can see the warm front, cold front combination weakening. So here's the HRRR, the pock marks of showers and storms. Now the good news is that they're progressive. So even though it may pour heavily, it should only last for a couple of minutes in any one spot today, tonight, and tomorrow. Nature break, another nature break. What is that thing? Oh boy, it's landing on me. And while we're here, it did rain last night, 0 0.04. Oh, so that gets me up to uh, now uh, almost a quarter inch for this week. St. Johnsbury got eight inches, 17 inches for the month, and I have not even gotten two inches for the month. So once in a lifetime weather happens for someone, somewhere, every day. And for you people in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, this was a once in a lifetime month of rain. Hopefully this does not ever repeat itself in our lifetime. I'm flummoxed, I have to admit it. Been working on a lot of different things. <laughs> Wait till you see the Inmore car broke down right in the middle of a busy intersection yesterday. And the weather just will not offer a break. How about some more nature? The, uh, the gourd flowers, they open up for the morning and then they shut down during the afternoon and evening. And we get some gourds, we get some gourds going. We get a cat eating. Is this switchgrass next to the hedge grass? 50% pets, 50% nature, 50% TK, 50% weather. You get 200% here. All right. A lot of things to show you. I want to put the maps in motion. I'm going to stop them a couple of times. First, I'm going to put the map in motion for today, the lower 48, and stop it this evening, overnight tonight. This is uh, 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, and over South Dakota and Iowa, that's another one of those mesoscale convective systems forming along the boundary between the extreme heat and the regular heat that's here in the northeast. And this is sliding off to the southeast. And last week I said, watch out for the 588 thickness in South Dakota this week. So this is called verification. Where's the 588 thickness? That, that thickness that's warm enough for 108. It's over North Texas. So a week ago that was forecast by a couple of the runs to be right over South Dakota. And instead it's over North Texas. So that's T-Rex. That's how difficult a seven-day forecast is. I mean, that 580 thickness does exist, but it's about 800 miles to the south of where it was forecast a week ago. So these long-range weather forecasts are only estimates on what's going to happen. Put that back in motion. So the big mesoscale convective systems with all the severe weather are missing us to the south and west, but we have our own sort of flow out of southeastern Canada that's causing our thunderstorms. Tomorrow and Friday look like perhaps less active and Saturday hopefully less active too. Most of the showers and thunderstorms across northern New England progressive should not result in widespread flooding. That H triple R was overdone for the rainfall in Maine today. I'm so frustrated. T-Rex. Please come here. I'm close to quitting, but I always do these in one take, unscripted, and regroup. I think it gets a lot more active here, especially west and north on Saturday. Now we're getting some of those mesoscale convective systems coming at us. Sunday, here's a front out of Canada. And now we start to see Tropical Cyclone Debbie on the map to our south. One of the rules about how you get a hurricane in New England is they have to be moving by North Carolina toward the north fairly quickly. That is not in the forecast. It looks like whatever is Tropical Cyclone Debbie anywhere from the Gulf of Mexico to off the southeastern United States, it is a slow mover. And here comes another front from Canada now next Wednesday. And let's freeze it here next Wednesday. And there's 992 Tropical Cyclone Debbie south of New England. 
There's a thousand six millibar low with what looks like a convective mesoscale system coming at us from the west. And then there is a sort of September like front dragging its heels on us now, much slower than yesterday, north of Lake Superior. So that's three flows there. And it's all about where those three flows end up in seven days. If they happen to be slower moving hurricane, faster moving front side of the Midwest, and they phase, and all of a sudden Debbie speeds up, then we're in deep doo-doo. If it stays like this and we get three sort of flat systems, we still end up with quite a bit of rain, but not a hurricane. And much cooler, more comfortable air coming back in, put it back in motion next Thursday, Friday. Note how we kind of keep kicking that can down the road on that much cooler and drier air. It's gonna come in waves next week. So very sultry here. Dew points in the 70s. Temperatures yesterday in Boston did hit 90, so those Euro temperatures were underdone. Here is the Euro 14-day Euro forecast. And there are your days off Thursday, Friday. Now this is for Boston. And note the low temperature. Look at these 73s. The low temperature on, what, Friday, Saturday, 73. And then the high temperature on Tuesday, Wednesday, 73. I think those lows are probably accurate, but those highs are not accurate. As you see the uh, degree of uncertainty, those are the operational numbers, those 73s, yeah, right. That's the low end of the ensemble range. That's what you call it, that uncertainty, the, the shade of the red, how it's so wide. That's a great degree of uncertainty, but you can see at least the shades of red and blue do slant down toward cooler later next week and to next weekend. And there may or may not be a hurricane threat in there. And there is going to be some much more comfortable air coming in next week, whether it comes with more flooding rain is yet to be determined. Really appreciate your patience. It's gonna be a very interesting cloud day today and probably some rainbows this evening. And there goes the work boat out of here. And so I'll leave you with a, I'll try and be a little upbeat, but there's not a lot of upbeat for me right now. Very busy. I'm not used to being very busy. I like not to be in a hurry. You know that. But uh, Lord willing, we'll see you again in 24 hours. And more. Nightmare scenario where you break down sometimes. This is really fun. This is how we want to spend our early day. It's scary. He's, he's such an active, active guy on everything. Yeah. He's a huge component of, of my job. Because uh, 70% of our uh, fleet is here. They can hear the fan moving, but there's no air coming through the vents. All right, the heat and humidity are back, and I'm back from trying to get the car out of the middle of the road, and Mitt's sitting on my keyboard, and we still have not published out the door weather and more yet for today. Passing two o'clock, Tuesday, kinda down near the, down the drain. And the phone just rang. That was Matt with Powder Magazine. He's thinking about maybe using some TK weather in the magazine. What do you think? He thinks, just scratch my head. That's why I'm here. He's trying to get an out the door weather and more. About 20 to six, got to 90 in Logan Airport today. Strangely, the dew point went from 72 degrees to 63 degrees between 3.30 and five. That was kind of nice, more of a southwest than a southerly flow, but for most of us, dew points have been in the 70s and there's more severe weather happening again from northern New York into northern Vermont. But at least this rain should be more progressive. Hopefully no flooding, but there's a new flood watch in effect because it's saturated. Kind of a depressing day here. Sorry to bring you down. Long day. 24 hours from now. We'll be over at Trillium Brewery. Are you joining us? And Matt and Danielle and the Blue Hill Observatory, which I guess because and more comes the next day. It's happening this afternoon. See you there. Still some smoke in the sky, some cirrus clouds, some condensation trails. 
the storms seem to have diminished in northern New York and northern Vermont. Looks like a maybe a uh, derecho mesoscale convective system crossing out of Illinois into Kentucky. So that looks like the worst weather tonight. It's sliding from northwest to southeast, so not really in our direction. Not yet, anyway. Swirly sky waves. And I'm just about to begin harvesting tomatoes near the eggplants over there. So do you think the critters will leave me these overnight? <laughs> and there's another one over here. And I'm not done staking the tomatoes. I got another one, two, three, four, five tomato steaks to go, I guess. And I've been watching the bees go to bed. Right in that crack right there behind that little pepper. Oh, one just came out. Of course, you can't cue bees, but they live behind that old Roger Kent wooden support. Got to think that's been here for more than 50 years. All right, the bees are not going to put on a show for us. How about Steve? <laughs> Steve hears me talking. Who's he talking to? That's what everyone always says. Who's he talking to? I'm talking to everybody, Steve. It's out the door weather and this is the and more conclusion for our Tuesday January Tuesday <laughs> July 30th in January we'll want weather like this and in July we want weather like in January well speak for yourself Tim Don Z circles. I think that's the Donzi anyway. All right, off into the sunset. Play us out, Captain Spacetime. Till tomorrow. <laughs>